M4 Pro and M4 Max. What exactly should you expect from these chips going into the new MacBook Pros and redesigned Mac Mini? Well, thankfully, Russian YouTubers Will Succumb and Romansev768 apparently paid 7,500 US dollars to get the M4 MacBook Pro an entire month early, giving us a massive amount of benchmarks and insight to help figure out exactly what to expect with the M4 and M4 Max models, including the specs, new features, core counts, and of course, performance numbers, which we can finally extrapolate from the leaked M4 benchmarks. So let's jump right into it. First of all, the About This Mac page on the leaked M4 MacBook Pro says November 2024, confirming Mark Gurman's prediction that Apple will launch the new M4, M4 Pro, and M4 Max MacBook Pros on November 1st, alongside the M4 iMac and M4 Mac Mini, which will also have an M4 Pro option. And this also confirms that there will for sure be an Apple event towards the end of this month, and I know that because the new Mac Mini will be getting the biggest redesign ever. Apparently being half the size as before and now packing five USB-C ports, including two on the front and three Thunderbolt ports on the back, which was confirmed by the leaked M4 MacBook Pro, since it now finally has three Thunderbolt ports, which makes sense since the M4 chip itself now has four Thunderbolt controllers instead of the previous two. Now, as far as the MacBook Pro, the leaked M4 model got no design changes at all other than the third port being added, so don't expect any changes on the M4 Pro and M4 Max models, and I honestly think Apple will keep the same ports as before since we already had enough in my opinion. So this means that Apple will be entirely relying on the performance upgrades to get people to buy a new MacBook Pro, like going up to 16 gigabytes of base RAM on the M4 MacBook Pro, as well as huge, bigger than expected performance gains, which will of course translate to the M4 Pro and M4 Max chips to entice people to finally upgrade. But as far as the RAM situation, I personally don't think that Apple will increase the base amount of RAM on these higher end chips and models. It'll probably stay the same at 18 gigabytes for the M4 Pro and 36 for the M4 Max. Now jumping into performance benchmarks, I first wanna show you guys the predictions I made back in August because I apparently was way too conservative in terms of the scores. For Geekbench 6's single core test, I only predicted 3,728 for the regular M4 and up to 3,880 for the M4 Max, but the Russian leak gave us a massive score of 3,864 for the base M4 chip, which is just crazy. And in Cinebench 2024 single core test, it scored 174 points, which makes it the fastest mass production chip in the world. And as far as my multi-core prediction, I guessed that the new 10 core M4 would score 14,479, since that's the highest score we saw on the M4 iPad Pro. But apparently, Apple is allowing the M4 MacBook Pro to run even faster, scoring a massive 15,288 points, proving that the M4 series architecture redesign is better than I expected. So now let's get into estimating the performance of the M4 Pro and M4 Max chips. The first step is to figure out the core counts, and I believe Apple absolutely must increase the core count on the M4 Pro chip, seeing as the $2,000 M3 MacBook Pro comes with only only 11 cores instead of the full 12, so the binned version has only five performance cores instead of six, compared to four on the regular M4 chip with the same number of efficiency cores, which is six. So if they actually want to make it enticing enough for people to pay the extra money, Apple needs to add more cores to the M4 Pro, so I fully believe they'll add two extra performance cores, up to eight of them. How do I know this? Well, because the M2 Pro chip actually already had up to eight performance cores before Apple took two of them away for the M3 Pro and replaced them with two more E-cores just to make the M3 Max look a lot faster. 
And this time around, I believe that Apple will bring those eight performance cores back to make the M4 Pro a 14 core CPU. Now, as far as the M4 Max chip, the current M3 Max has up to 16 CPU cores with 12 of them being performance and four being efficiency. So this time around, I believe Apple will give the M4 Max two extra E cores. So it has the same matching six E core cluster as the rest of the M4 chips, which of course greatly helps with battery life, making the new M4 Max up to 18 cores. So with that said, let's get into my personal predictions for the M4 Pro and Max chips, starting with single core performance. Since the M4 chip scored 3,864, I expect the M4 Max to score even better, close to around 4,000 points, which is just crazy. Now for multi-core performance, this is definitely a lot trickier to figure out since we have a completely different mix of performance and efficiency cores on the M4 Pro and Max chips. But if we refer to the M4 chip, it's actually 30% faster than the M3, which makes sense because it has 25% more cores, 10 instead of eight, and the cores themselves are all faster than before. For example, the clock speed of the P cores is now 4.5 0.41 gigahertz, which is 8.88% faster than the M3, which was 4.05 gigahertz. And the E-Core clock speed is now 2.88 gigahertz, or 4.7% faster than the M3, which was 2.75, according to Geeker One on YouTube. So a balance of all of that pretty much gets us 30% faster multi-core. So with that said, for the M4 Pro, I'm expecting it to be 25% faster, so not as big of a difference, mainly because it only has 16.67% more cores, 14 instead of 12, but the extra two cores that you get are performance cores, giving you essentially 33% more P cores than we had before, which are also a lot more powerful than E cores, and then considering that they're 8.8% faster this time around, I landed at a general 25% as a good balance, up to 19,150 15 points, making it just a bit faster than the 14 core M3 Max, and that's just crazy. And then as for the new M4 Max, I think it's gonna get an additional two E cores, so 18 instead of 16, which is 12.5% more cores that are now faster. But due to the way Geekbench 6's multi-core test works, it suffers from diminishing returns with so many cores. So I think the M4 Max will honestly only be about 15% faster, so up to 24,061 points, which is still faster than my initial prediction, making it the fastest mass production CPU in the world, according to Geekbench's charts. Now, as far as the neural engines for AI performance, the leaked M4 MacBook Pro scored 50,278 in Geekbench AI in terms of the quantized score. So I expect the M4 Pro and M4 Max to perform the same or maybe even higher depending on the RAM. Now getting into graphics, this one's a lot easier since the performance scales more or less linearly with the core count, and the M4 was 17.4% faster than the M3 with the same amount of cores, 10. So with that said, I'm fairly certain that the new M4 Pro will now have up to 20 GPU cores, so I'm gonna add 17.4% to the score that the 18 core M3 Pro got, and then I'm gonna add another 11.1% for having a 11.1% more cores, giving us a total of 102,498 points. Now, as for the M4 Max, I kind of have a feeling that it's gonna stick to the same 40 GPU cores as before to keep everything consistent, double of what you can get in the M4 Pro. So if we add 17.4% to the score of the 40 core M3 Max, we get 181,710, which is faster than the M1 Ultra with 64 GPU cores. So based on everything in this video, I believe that the base M4 MacBook Pro and Mac Mini are gonna be the stars of the show this year due to the new 16 gigs of base RAM, the faster performance and the extra Thunderbolt port, while the M4 Pro is gonna be a decent upgrade seeing as it's getting two extra P cores and two extra GPU cores, while the M4 Max isn't gonna look as interesting this year. So hopefully you're as excited as I am for these new M4 Series Mac 
packs launching on November 1st. And if you are, definitely subscribe above for more videos like this one and check out those Russian leak videos that I made right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.